diabetes? Well, low energy, that could be an indication. Fatigue, tired all the time. Extreme thirst, always going for water. Frequent urination, that could be it. Blurred vision, could I have diabetes? Irritability, weight changes, up or down, dramatic. Numbness or tingling in the hands or feet. Frequent infections. What about extreme hunger? Bruises and cuts that are slow to heal. Nausea, vomiting, dehydration, and reduced consciousness level. That's a bit drastic. Well, I was in the ER one day. I was working on somebody with a broken wrist. Next to me, the ER doc had somebody in the stall, and they were busily trying to wake him up. Hey, wake up. Hey, wake up. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, wake up. Are you a diabetic? Did you know your blood sugar was 300? Oh, oh, no, me. No, I'm not a diabetic. Oh, where am I? And that's not the way to discover that you are a diabetic. But that's the way many people find out they are diabetics. By then, complications are well on their way. How did we used to treat diabetes? What are the treatments? Well, it's interesting. Here I have a statue of Hippocrates. He's the one that said, let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food. Well, that's a pretty good saying. There's a lot of practicality to that. In the year 1000 AD, Greek physicians recommended horseback riding to reduce excessive urination. Well, I don't know if it worked or not, but it's hard to find a good horse these days. Besides, the Humane Society is very active. Uh, in the 1800s, bleeding, blistering, and doping were common. Can you think of an early American, famous American that was bled to death? Yes, George Washington. And he probably had the flu or something, and after the third set of physicians came through to ply him with their healing arts, he was no longer responding. Well, you know, all bleeding eventually stops. In 1915, Sir William Osler of John Hopkins University recommended opium. Well, if we can't fix them, at least we can keep them happy. Here's a study in the New England Journal of Medicine comparing placebo medication and lifestyle in stopping diabetes in people who are pre-diabetic. They took a whole group of people who had blood sugars that were going a little too high, but not high enough to be diabetic, and they put them in three groups. One group had nothing done to them, one group got medications, and another group got lifestyle changes. Notice that the medicine group reduced the incidence of diabetes by 31 percent. Well, that's good. But notice that the group that got lifestyle changes saw a 58 percent reduction in the incidence of diabetes. The message, lifestyle changes are a much stronger medical intervention than pills. Well, it makes sense. Pills didn't cause the diabetes in the first place. It was lifestyle. What were the lifestyle changes? They included losing weight, 7% of your weight. They included exercising daily, a goal of 150 minutes per week. They improved their eating, gave them more fiber, had them eat less fat, and lowered the glycemic load of their diets. Well, if lifestyle is such a strong intervention, what lifestyle changes do I need to make to avoid diabetes? Eat a whole plant food diet. You eat the entire food, you eat it unrefined whole wheat, not just the white part of it, the whole thing. Okay, test time. I want you to look at my screen here and tell me if the food I put up here is a whole plant food. All right, is that a whole plant food? Yeah, yeah, of salad, sure. How about this? No, it's a fish. Fish aren't plants. Okay, how about mushroom soup? Well, I don't even know what a mushroom is. Okay, how about grease and different packages and forms with different Enticing labels. You're shaking your head no. Okay. All right. How about this? Well, yeah, it's, it's a mixed up, isn't it? It's got fruit and it's got juice. But right, yeah, the juice is not a whole plant food whole, but the fruit is. All right. Nuts. Yeah. Cheese. No. Peas. Yeah. Meat. That's not a plant. Oats. Sure. Old-fashioned oats. Beans. Yeah. How about white biscuits? No. White spaghetti? No. How about brown spaghetti? 
Sure, you can get whole grain spaghetti. It's much better for you. How about corn? Corn on the cob. Sure, that's good stuff. How about corn chips? But wait a minute. It says whole corn, but then the next ingredient is corn oil. You know how many ears of corn it takes to make one teaspoon of oil? About 13. Is that a plant, whole plant food? No, it's not a plant. It came from a chicken. How about white tortillas? No, brown tortillas? Yeah, you're getting the idea. Fruit? Yes. Milk? No. Okay. You figured out what a whole plant food was, and that's good. So now you get an A. If you go home and you practice it, you get an A+. Plus. Now here we're going to talk about eating more high fiber foods. Fiber is important. Fiber protects against constipation. Oh, who wants to die of constipation? And high cholesterol helps reduce cholesterol. Heart disease reduces heart disease. And it lowers blood sugar. In fact, a colleague of mine had a patient come to him who was diabetic as a result of being pregnant. We call it gestational diabetes. This lady did not want to take drugs. She did not want to take insulin. She didn't want anything to affect her baby. She wanted a normal baby, but she had diabetes. Well, what to do? She came to my colleague and said, well, let's try something. Let's have you take a half a cup of oat bran three times a day. Wow, that's a lot of oat bran. So she went home. Oat bran cookies, oat bran muffins, oat bran bread, oat bran cereal, oat bran everything. But you know, she totally controlled her diabetes. Her blood sugar stayed normal. She didn't have to take pills or insulin. She delivered a normal child and then her diabetes was gone. It helps reduce the risk of certain cancers and it helps reduce obesity. Well, let's look at this for a minute in the women's health study out of Harvard. They discovered that if people ate higher fiber foods and lower glycemic index, they could reduce the risk of diabetes by two and a half times. What about adding oat bran just to bread? A study where they compared white bread to white bread with oat bran discovered that adding the oat bran reduced blood sugars by 46% and insulin response by 19%. Just adding more oat bran. The last seminar I did over south of Boston, uh, I did the diabetes talk at the beginning of the week. One of the gentlemen came to that. He said, okay, I'm going to start adding more oat bran. He came back at the end of the week and to report that his blood sugars were now pretty near normal and that he was very happy to find out how important fiber was. One source of fiber is whole grains. Whole grains are very healthy for that reason. Replacing refined grains, white bread, with whole grains can reduce the risk of diabetes by 70%. In fact, increasing the number of servings of whole grains in a day reduces the risk of diabetes by 50%. Now there's other benefits to whole grains besides the fiber. It's not just the fiber is what I want to say. One of those benefits is the minerals. For example, chromium. Well, diabetics generally have no chromium in their tissue compared to other people. Well, what happened? Did they lose it when they were born? Or? Well, here's the problem. If you are eating carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates that have no chromium in them, your body has to take from its own stores of chromium just to process the sugar because sugar requires chromium to process. Well, that's a problem. It sure is. Well, where am I going to get my chromium? Well, 100% whole wheat has eight times the chromium as white flour. Oh, okay. And brown rice has four times the chromium as white rice. So there's some good sources. Sometimes we even suggest the diabetic go and take a little chromium supplement. Oh, chew your food. Do I have to chew my food? Well, you have to choose food that requires chewing too. And in fact, when you chew food that requires chewing, it gives you an early insulin surge. That early insulin surge prepares for the in take of sugar so when the sugar hits the bloodstream it doesn't go too high. It also helps reduce food intake. How about breakfast? 
How important is breakfast? Oh, very important. In fact, people who eat breakfast eat less total calories for the day. They have lower cholesterols and they have 50% lower risk of diabetes. All benefits. Now, I said that cells become hungry if you exercise. Remember that on the chart? And so the benefits of exercise include lowering your blood sugar and lowering your insulin for that matter. Helps control weight and improves mental outlook. Helps with that stress that increases the risk of diabetes. Here's a little study where they compared people who were sedentary to those who were active. People who were the most active saw a 46 percent reduction in their risk of diabetes. Activity is important. Activity predicts longevity. By the way, if you can't find time to exercise, you will have to find time to be sick. More people die for one of exercise than through over fatigue. We rust out before we wear out. Exercise is important. Another important thing is losing weight. Remember we said the New England Journal of Medicine study that saw a 58% reduction in the risk of diabetes suggested people lose weight, 7% of their weight. Studies show that if we continuously lose weight, approaching ideal body weight, we can reduce the risk of diabetes by 30 to 50%. How about vitamin D? We know vitamin D is good for the bones, but it's also very important for diabetes. In fact, vitamin D deficiency increases the risk of diabetes. Vitamin D supplementation, on the other hand, has been shown to reduce the risk. But we'd like to suggest getting out in the sun to be the best way of getting your vitamin D. How about water? Here's a gentleman offering you a glass of water. I wish all my patients had somebody offering them a glass of water every day, maybe 10 times a day. Our, our wellness director decided to see what would happen if they put water in all the break rooms for the employees. As they put water in the break rooms, the employees would drink the water. Pretty soon they were putting whole pallets of bottled water in all the break rooms. People were drinking the water. It was a good idea. It cost the hospital $25,000 per year. But it reduced the, the insurance utilization by 240000 three years in a row. So the 25000 was a small investment. Water is very important for health. Lowers blood sugar. Well, which is sweeter, a raisin or a grape? Well, a raisin is sweeter. Well, you get the idea. If you get dehydrated, your blood sugar goes up by sheer concentration. You drink more water, it goes down by sheer dilution. And it decreases diabetic neuropathy, the pain or numbness in the hands or feet. Okay, in summary, diabetes reduction summary. Regular exercise in the open air and sunshine is the first thing on the list. In the open air, so you get more fresh air. In the sunshine, so you get more vitamin D. Exercise so your cells become more hungry. Eat an unrefined plant-based diet, low in fat and high in fiber with all the phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals and things you need. Make weight control a habit, drink plenty of water, get adequate sleep, avoid stimulants such as coffee, alcohol, and tobacco, and turn your stress over to God, because he's the only one that can really handle it. They did a big study. Diabetic patients were studied for 25 days on a special diet exercise program with adequate sunshine, rest, and pure filtered water. Patients were fed an unrefined plant-based diet, low in fat, 10 to 15 percent of the calories. That's low fat, with high fiber and no cholesterol. Results, average weight loss was 11 pounds in that month. That's pretty good. One fourth no longer needed insulin or drugs to control their blood sugar. The rest who still needed insulin saw their requirements cut nearly in half. Blood pressure dropped from 155 over 81 to 132 over 77 and 81 percent had complete relief of the peripheral neuropathy, the pain or numbness in the hands or feet. Well, what have we been talking about? This is the Bible diet, isn't it? Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and you will eat Snickers bars. Oh, wait a minute. You'll eat the plants of the field. 
Just think if we stuck with that. Remember he told the Israelites, if thou will diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians. And the Egyptians had diabetes. If we just stuck with the original diet, just think how lower our disease rates would be in our society. Well, let's plan on avoiding diabetes. How many want to avoid diabetes? All right, that's good. So do I. Boy, heart attack, stroke, dementia, amputations, premature confinement to a nursing home. On the other hand, exercise regularly. Eat only a whole plant-based diet and turn your stress over to God. How many want to do that? Yes, avoiding diabetes. Do you understand now why I call it the butter with the sweet? Because of the contribution of fat, both the fat you eat and the fat you wear, and then how sweet interacts with that.